God has a purpose in allowing the storms in our life, whatever they may be. And naturally, one of them is to reveal Himself to us. I can think about times in my life when I've been through storms and seeking the Lord and asking God to show me this or whatever it might be, that I get a new glimpse, a little different glimpse, a little different perspective on how God thinks about things. And one thing about living a pretty good while, you learn things by experience you don't learn early in life. And so sometimes He wants to reveal Himself to us and give us understanding of who He is. God knows how to take storms in our life and do something good for us if we're willing to listen to Him and willing not to give up and not to criticize Him and blame God. When you start blaming God, here's what happens. You separate yourself from Him emotionally and spiritually. Not that He leaves you, but if you blame God, you withdraw yourself from the very source of the one who loves you, who provides for you, who will save you in the storm, who will strengthen you, who will make you a better person. You don't withdraw from God in the storm. And I think all of us who've been through difficult times, when we look back and see what God did, not what we did, not somebody else did, but what God did in our life and how He brought us through it. Because God is a loving God. And just because there's a storm in your life doesn't mean that God has deserted you. It doesn't mean that God is punishing you. It means that He has something in mind. Whatever the reason, watch this, whatever the reason is, God's purpose is always for our good. Always to do something in our behalf that makes us a better person, brings us close to Him, demonstrates His power, shows His love for us. So storms have a purpose from God's perspective. And some of the worst storms, very evident that God is in them because of the results of what happens. Then, somebody says, well, it's hard for me to believe that God demonstrates His love in the storm. So I want you to turn to uh, the 55th chapter of Isaiah. Because that sometimes people say, well, if God was a God of love, He would never let this happen. The 55th chapter of Isaiah and the 8th verse. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. That is, I don't think the way you do. Nor are my ways your ways. We don't act the same, declares the Lord. For as, watch this, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return therewith without watering the earth and making it bare and sprout and furnishing seed to the sow and bread to the eater, so will my word be which goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the manner for which I sent it. And so God is in the midst of the storm, wh whatever is going on. And when it comes to why certain things happen, Isaiah 55 is a very simple, a profound answer from the Word of God. So He demonstrates His love even in difficult times. And then I think one of the primary reasons is this. He reminds us of who is in control. God is in control. And I'm simply saying He doesn't make mistakes. It isn't because God doesn't love us. It isn't because He thinks that we don't deserve better. In other words, God allows them for a purpose. You say, well, what's the purpose about this, that, and the other? I don't claim to have that kind of knowledge. Nobody does but God. But listen, when you're a believer following the Lord, nothing happens in your life without God's permissive will and always with a purpose to strengthen us, to bless us, to prepare us, to equip us, to express love toward us, whatever it might be, God always has a loving motive in mind. So that's a very simple message. I want it to be simple because the next time somebody says to you, well, if God is a God of love, <laughs> and you can say to them, yes, He is. He loved you enough that you could wake up this morning. 
And so oftentimes people who judge God, they don't know Him. And you as a believer, as long as you understand who God is and how He operates, that's what matters.